in the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. Dear audience, I have been talking about syntax. In my previous classes, I have talked about lexical categories and grammar with lexical categories. Today we are going to move forward and we are going to talk about phrasal categories. In phrasal categories, we will be talking about four different kinds of tests that Peter Sells talks about in order to determine that whether something is a constituent or not. So these tests will help us to determine whether something is a phrase, something is a constituent or not. No doubt in the beginning Peter Sells talks about that people they make use of their intuitions to determine that something or some phrase is a constituent. For example, the students enjoyed the student enjoyed his English syntax class last semester. So look at example number 45. The student enjoyed his English syntax class last semester. The student enjoyed his English syntax class last semester. The student enjoyed his English syntax class last semester. So of course 45A is the correct reading, is the correct division that you know Peter Sells has drawn here. And of course, he is talking about the intuitions of native speakers. And any learned person can make, can make use of intuition to determine the constituency of a sentence. But of course, every person cannot determine through intuition. Students need to understand that how we are going to divide this sentence into different constituent parts for this purpose the student can make use of different kinds of tests so the very first kind of test that peter sells introduces is called a cleft test the cleft construction which places an emphasized or focused element in the x position in the pattern it is or was x that it is or was like that can provide us with simple evidence for the existence of phrasal units. For example, think about how many different cleft sentences we can form from 46. The policeman met several young students in the park last night. So of course, if we apply this test, it is or it was and then exposition constituent, we can bring it here. In this way, we can determine the constituency of a phrase. It was the policeman that several young students met in the park last night. It was several young students that the policeman met in the park last night. It was in the park that the policeman met several young students in the last night. It was last night that the policeman met several young students in the park. So after it was, we can put the phrasal category. It was the policeman. It was several young students. It was in the park. It was last night. So it means that in the whole sentence, we have got different kinds of constituents. And these constituents, they can become the phrasal categories. I repeat, it was the policeman that met several young students in the park last night. It was several young students that the policeman met in the park last night. It was in the park that the policeman met several students last night. Or it was last night that the policeman met several young students in the park. However, we cannot cleft sequences that not form constituents. It was the policeman met? No. It was several young students in? No. It was in the park last night? No. So this is how we cannot make the phrasal categories. The second test that Peter Sells talks about is called constituent questions and stand alone test. 
we can also call it in other words that it is the wh question that can help determine the constituency of the sentence and wh words they involve who where when how and if we get the answer of these words they will be the complete phrasal categories they will be the constituencies this stand alone fragment is a constituent where did the policeman meet several young students where did the policeman meet in the park so in the park is a constituent whom did the policeman meet in the park several young students so of course the policeman met several young students in the park so several young students is a constituent this kind of test can be of use in determining constituents we will illustrate with example 51 john put old books in the box what did john put in the box old books so old books is a constituent where did john put books john put books in the box so in the box is a constituent and we are getting the answer of the question where we are getting the answer of the question where are either old books in the box or put old books in the box a constituent are there smaller constituents the wh question test can provide some answers what did you put in your box old books where did you put the books in the box what did you do put old books in the box so sometimes we can have longer phrases as well so put old books in the box basically it has got two constituents it has got two phrasal categories but they are making here a bigger constituent overall the test here will show the old books in the box are constituents the test is also sensitive to the difference between particles and prepositions in my previous video i have already talked about the difference between particle and preposition and this test can help us further differentiate between a particle and a preposition consider this sim similar looking example in 55 including looked and up john looked up the inside of the chimney john looked up the meaning of chanson the third kind of test that peter sells talks about to determine the constituency of a sentence is called a substitution by a pronoun so of course most of the pronouns they can substitute a noun so something which can substitute a noun it will help us to determine the constituent for instance the man who is standing by the door in 59 can be substituted by the pronoun he what do you think the man who is standing by the door is doing now what do you think he is doing now so the man who is standing by the door can be substituted by the word he so it means that that was a constituent the other pronoun such as there so as and which they can also refer back to other constituents have you been to see all i have been there so there is here standing for see all john might go home so might bill so so is going to stand for go home john might pass the exam and as might bill so as is going to stand for the pass the exam if john can speak french fluently which we all know he can which here is going to stand for speak french fluently so we will have no problems john asked me to put the claws in the cupboard and to annoy him i really stuffed them there them is standing for clothes and there is substituting in the cupboards so pronouns they can also be used to determine the constituency of a sentence the last kind of test that we can use to determine the phrasal category or the constituency is called coordination because in english when we speak english or write english after coordination or before coordination there should be some balance 
so balance will also determine that there should be a phrase another commonly used test is coordination words and phrases can be coordinated by conjunctions and each conjunct is typically the same kind of constituent as the other conjuncts the girls played in the water and swam under the bridge so and is combining two constituents played in the water and swam under the bridge so played it has got a verb and in the water prepositional phrase and swam verb and under the bridge a preposition phrase so these two are constituents the children were neither in their rooms nor on the porch in their rooms is a prepositional phrase nor on the porch on the porch is a prepositional phrase and with the help of coordination we can determine the constituency she was poor but quite happy on both sides of but there is adjective poor but quite happy many people drink beer or wine so beer is noun and after or there is wine which is another noun so they are the constituents but we cannot say mary waited for the bus and to go home so it means that after and another constituent which is required it is not there there is no balance in the sentence so dear audience in my today's lecture i have talked about four kinds of tests that we can use to determine phrasal category or constituency of a sentence so first one was that there is cleft sentence so with the help of it is it was we can determine the phrase then there was substitution by a pronoun then we have talked about you know uh, wh words and this is how we can determine the constituency of a sentence thank you very much